Warning, this video contains language that might upset some people. If you don't like swearing, please destroy your playback device immediately before it's too late. To everybody else, please enjoy. Hello and welcome to this review of my Steel Series Z board thing. Majig. Bob. Yeah, I think you can already tell that this is going to be the first genuine rant of 2019. This thing was a present from our brother who bought it at a flea market. Thanks, Simpy. Although I have other Steel Series boards as well, this is the first one to be reviewed on this channel. <laughs> and what a board it is. Steel Series is a Danish company founded in 2001 who claimed to have made the first mechanical gaming keyboard, although the first gaming keyboard to really kick off was arguably the Razer Black Widow in 2010. This one predates the Black Widow, it was produced at least as early as 2006, making it almost a bit of a gaming keyboard fossil. It's definitely ugly enough to look the part, but it doesn't have any backlighting at all, let alone RGB. I guess that wasn't really a thing yet at the time. I mean, not that I care, but some people really like their flashy bells and whistles. It had a list price of $40 at the time, which is fairly cheap, but then again it came with rubber domes as key switches and it didn't have backlighting, so considering you can get a gaming keyboard from China nowadays with actual discrete switches for less shipped, this thing wouldn't stand a chance on today's market. And that's not counting that it has one of the weirdest features I've ever seen on a keyboard and almost certainly the worst layout in history, but I'll get back to that in a bit. The rubber domes on this keyboard are pretty unremarkable. They feel almost exactly the same as one of those horrendous Dell afterbirths, except slightly stiffer. It's basically the definition of the type of switch you're trying to get away from when you buy a premium keyboard. Of course, being a rubber dome board it makes very little noise, but then again, so does stepping in a dog turd. Very much a case of silent but deadly. Although SteelSeries wisely washed their hands of this stillborn ass rag and took it off their website, Amazon still has an old listing up where it is claimed that it has anti-ghosting capabilities, namely up to seven simultaneous keystrokes, which is marketing speak for two key rollover. As I've mentioned in several videos before, don't get pulled in by the anti-ghosting bullshit. It's an intentionally misleading term that refers to a completely different feature which every single keyboard ever made possesses. It's true that it possesses a gaming optimized matrix, i.e. I had to search a bit for a combination that reveals the two key rollover, but eventually I found out how it works, and one example is O, P and left, where the left key is ignored. At the top is a row of media keys that look like indicator lights, and these allow you to lower or increase volume, mute, open email, or a bunch of other programs, etc. However, I found that none of the keys do anything, and they don't ever light up either. So, yay. The build quality is fairly okay though, it weighs 940 grams, which is somewhat on the hefty side for a rubber dome keyboard, and the case is thick plastic held together by a whole bunch of screws at the back. I'd say it's honestly not too bad, probably the only thing on the entire keyboard that doesn't entirely suck Satan's cheesy knobhead. It's got super weird feet, you'll be forgiven for thinking they're already extended, but no, they're just hollow protrusions that happen to look like feet. Now the feet are actually hidden inside the feet, like this. <laughs> Whatever man, with everything that this keyboard throws at you, it scores pretty low on the suck assometer. One of the things that really gets your guts grinding with grief is the layout, which is possibly the worst I've ever seen on a keyboard. And that is saying something. This layout is so bad it utterly defies all sense. On the left is this positively inane cluster of gaming buttons that's so try hard and wannabe it makes me want to vomit. You've got this red splotch of a thing here that's supposed to represent a WASD cluster with some scattered buttons around it that are also often used in gaming. The only problem is the keys are all in different positions from where you'd expect them to be and they have different spacings from usual as well. And the keys have these hideous little round buttons on them, which makes an already quite unpleasant rubber dome keyboard about as comfortable as a pair of thumb screws. The R and F keys are almost logical, that seems fine-ish if you really squint maybe, even though they're normally located like this instead of the other way around. But the grave accent and tab keys are both one row lower from where you'd expect them, and then when you get to the lower two rows it gets really criminally insane. So 
here is C, and then after that comes Z for some reason, so they're swapped around, and then fucking G, which isn't even on the right row for fuck's sake, and then comes X, which is normally between Z and C, not to mention these two bracket keys here between the alt and spacebar. I mean, what bollocks the bullshit is this? In order to make any amount of typing even remotely possible outside of having to use the tumor on the left, they also provided a normal set of keys, but I really use the word normal in the loosest possible sense here. The rest is split into three other parts like some sort of ergonomic nightmare. The left hand side looks almost normal except it's in the middle of the keyboard rather than to the left where it belongs and all the number keys are shifted over as they start on the left, not to mention it's the deplorable laser printed smarty buttons again. And of course this placement of the B key with this hole between V and B which would be laughable if it didn't kill kittens. And then next to that is the other half of the keys in a small block, except this one is ortholinear. And then next to that is another ortholinear block with the last few letters and symbols on it, as well as part of the nav cluster. The other nav buttons are scattered throughout the board or just emitted entirely. Apart from the weird button placement, misaligned number row and absolutely impenetrable right hand cluster, just look at this backspace key right here. This makes even a small backspace key on a big ass enter keyboard look good. I'd like for you to take all this in for a second, really. I mean, a keyboard split in three parts of which one is staggered and the other two are ortholinear, a useless piece of shit to the left of that, and an absolutely impossible layout to boot. What bald ass bunghole badger came up with this Jesus Christ on a treadmill? This is just unacceptable! But now comes the creme de la creme, its prime feature, the one thing that's gonna steal the show. You can Take out the top plate and insert a new layout in the keyboard. It's got this little thing here which meets this little thing here which presumably tells the keyboard what layout you put on top of it as presumably otherwise it has no way of knowing what's on top of it but there you go. That's its big showpiece right there. Please applaud ladies and gentlemen, your keyboard is here. This also explains the harebrained layout, as you could also get versions with a pretty standard layout, such as this StarCraft II edition one. So you could take it out and put it in a normal layout, or you could use SteelSeries' special gaming layout top. I mean, what's the point? This sounds like it's about as good an idea as lighting your dick on fire and using it as a torch. Holy mother of cunt fuck! In conclusion, this is easily one of the worst and most absurd keyboard designs I've ever seen. I agree that most gaming keyboards nowadays are a bit gimmicky and are full of features they don't really need, but I mean, come on! That's it for this review. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. And following is a typing demonstration of me typing on this undiluted piece of rhinoceros poop.